North versus South, Republicans versus Democrats, the Union versus the Confederacy. Diplomatic talks have come to a crashing end as the American Civil War springs into action. But nobody could have predicted how brutal and deadly this civil war was going to be. Now the Union army has entered Confederate territory, but not without facing resistance. The Confederate army caught wind of the Union invasion and quickly marched forward to meet head to head. But the Union army have been smart and they have sent a secondary army on a flanking maneuver round the side. But spotting the encirclement before it was too late, a Confederate army now moves to that position to put up a defense under the capable command of Jackson. Now American civilians not yet understanding the danger that they are in, gather on the hillside to spectate the American Civil War's first major battle. Okay, let's begin the battle to the bull run. Who's gonna come out on top? Will it be the Union Army or the Confederate Army? And man, every single time the first opening shots are brutal. Both sides here taking an absolute pounding. Look at them. They're just getting chopped to pieces and there's quite a lot of Union soldiers left over here. But let's look at the Union flanking army. Okay, it looks like Stonewall Jackson over here. He has gone and done it. He has entirely killed this Union Army with one remaining Union soldier over here who's about to get sniped but on the other side we have got the leftovers of the rest of the Union soldiers now moving in on Stonewall Jackson over here but will it be enough? You tell you what actually it might just be enough. These last few Union soldiers are actually getting picked off by Stonewall Jackson and only three Confederate soldiers. I think he is going to earn his name if he somehow pulls this off. Somehow that guy just got a kill like that. I don't know when he's dead. Oh, and that snipe right there. I don't believe it. Yes, he throws up his fist to signal victory. Having been defeated at the Battle of Bull Run, the Union Army now looks to redeem itself under the command of General McClellan. But McClellan left it too late to attack and allowed the Confederate Army to be reinforced by General Robert E. Lee. Now, General Lee understood one thing, that the commander of the Union Army, General McClellan, is pretty much entirely useless. He begins to push forward and put pressure on his enemy. And so begins the Seven Days Battle. Now the way that we're going to recreate the Seven Days Battles here is we have got one big Confederate army. To simulate the multiple battles that took place over the Seven Day Retreat, we have one army, two army, three army, four army, five army, and then we've got six. And finally, at the back of the map, we have a seventh army. The Union army will be tactically retreating in every single battle. All right, let's find out if Robert E. Lee was right about General McClellan. Look at these lads charge in any second. Now, all of these muskets are gonna go pinging off. This is going to be a big first engagement. Here they go. Does sprinting give them an advantage in the opening shots here? I'm not too sure, but if I speed things up, we'll see how quickly this last guy gets wrecked. In fact, somehow he's still alive. How is that? Okay, no longer alive. Okay, they're now moving on to the second day of the seven days battles and it looks like the last few of these flag bearers, how are they not dead yet? How did he just survive that? Is he? Oh, okay, there we go. I spoke too soon. Day three of the seven day battles of the American Civil War. How many Confederate soldiers are still alive? It looks like there's still quite a lot of them. I mean, a lot died back here, but not as many as the Union soldiers. Remember, they're exactly even... Oh, that's why they're winning it because these guys all use their ammunition on the first guy. Now, if they're clumped up and they use their first shot like that, then great. But if they all shoot the same guy, then there's no benefit to it. And that, I think, is day number four. How's that guy dead already? He must have got shot through one of these lads here. Okay, look. Okay, they're shooting the general. The general goes down. There's just not as many Confederates dying. Not even close to as many dying as there are Union soldiers. Union soldiers, come on. You're on day number six now. You're gonna have to make a defense at some point. Look how nice and clumped up they are. You can be getting 
double kills with every shot. Come on. Surely they can get shots through here. Come on. What are they doing? So many Confederate soldiers are just storming out here. And who have we got left in the back lines? Oh, we've got Big Head. What's he done with that shot? Where's that gone? Has Big Head got a kill? Yes, he has. In fact, it looks like Big Head got a double kill. Of course he did. And he's, oh, he was the third last man. And the last two immediately fall, having seen their comrade Big Head go down. Defeated at the Battle of Bull Run. And having been routed in the Seven Days Battles, the North are in desperate need of a victory. And so they appoint a new general, General Burnside, with the objective of capturing Fredericksburg. But the attack has been delayed, which has allowed the Confederate army to dig in and entrench in their position. And so the Battle of Fredericksburg is not going to be an easy one for the Union Army and our new General Burnside. But let's put that theory to the test. Remember the North, the Union Army is in desperate need of a victory here. Let's see if they're gonna get it. The first shot's going in. It's always carnage. Let's speed it back up a little bit. See how much the damage is across the line. And now let's look at the Confederates. Okay, the Confederate front line here appears to have been slaughtered. Same with this one here. But they have additional lines of infantry back here that are ready to receive the Union Army. Let's go full speed and see how they do. General Burnside, I do not recommend that. And obviously he gets slaughtered. But let's see. The Union Army is now moving up on the gates here. They're going to try and charge through the center and into Fredericksburg. But it doesn't look like it's going too well so far. In fact, actually, I tell a lie. The Union Army is actually making some great progress around this side here. But they're not getting through this front door. They're being pinned down. The cannons are hitting them as they try and walk through the middle. And these Confederates just won't be dug out their position. There's still so many of them. And there we go. Another victory to the Confederate army. And finally, we arrive at the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, by this point in the American Civil War, the Confederates have seen great success with their military. But their economy has been on the decline and they're running out of manpower. And so the longer this war goes on, the more likely it is that the Union army is going to be victorious. And therefore, the Confederate army has to end this war and they have to end it soon. A victory at the Battle of Gettysburg would put Washington, D.C. at risk of invasion. And so victory in Gettysburg might mean a peace treaty which would allow the Confederate states to survive. Now, as for the battle itself, you will see the two armies will be facing off down this main street here. But we've also got Union soldiers all around the sides on both directions and up on the housetops. And the exact same thing can be seen down here with Confederate soldiers all over the place. And unfortunately for this town, they are going to be caught in the middle of this battle. Okay, let's start the battle and see what happens. We're going to have our rooftop fight going here against the Union soldiers. But the main battle, the one that we're all concerned about, is about to take place. We have the two main armies marching down the middle of the street. Which of these two armies is going to come out on top? Okay, that was a pretty strong start for the Union army. The Confederates just got slaughtered there. That was actually insane. They're kind of splitting up into small sections and the Union army is absolutely pounding these guys. The Union soldiers look way more numerous in number here. Yeah, the Confederates are about to be bayoneted. Ooh, yeah, it's exactly what I mean. There's only a handful of Confederate soldiers remaining here. Come on, Long Neck. Can you do it for us? Can Long Neck single-handedly snipe? Okay, no, there's your answer. We've got a little stalemate here. Who's going to reload first? Oh! Oh, 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 we've also got a couple of snipers up top here that are trying to get to what might be one very brave soldier here. What was that shot? Okay, he deserved to die after that. Our Confederate soldier is about to be shot in the side. This was the guy that won the duel a second ago. He's racking up a kill streak here. Let's see where he goes next. It's the adventures of this guy. Oh, I see what's happening here. There's a guy up here. And now you're going to see something that's quite interesting. Basically, the last last guy was stuck up here and so I used the bug DLC to get him out and so I pulled him over here where he was then sniped in midair. Of course, by our champion hero right here. Hence why that guy is like jumping between the rooftops. Bruh. Having been defeated at the Battle of Gettysburg, Robert E. Lee and his Confederate army now make their final stand at Petersburg. If the Confederate army lose this battle, then they will lose the war against the Union. And 
And having made his way east, the Union Army is now under the very capable command of General Grant. Will the Union Army win the battle and effectively end the war? Or is the Confederate Army about to get a second wind? All right, here we go. The Union Army is moving in and already they're taking their first few shots making contact here. Looks like these defensive walls are not doing too much. Okay, that is not a good start for the Confederates. Let's see this Union Army move in. There are so many units on the battlefield. Frankly, I'm surprised my computer is surviving. I don't believe it. He tried to jump off, but the recoil, they shot him back on there. That was not what I was expecting to see. He's now just laying there with his head in the sand. No, he makes the jump. Down he goes, and he is out for the count. And now what we have is we've got the final few Confederate soldiers dug into this crater as the Union soldiers start piling around the corner. This is about to be a bloodbath. In fact, we've actually got General Grant on the front line who called in some cannon support. And yeah, that just didn't go too well for the Confederate army there, did it? So with the Union victory at the Battle of Petersburg, the Confederate army is effectively Effectively out the war. That was some totally accurate battle simulator with my recreation of the American Civil War. And if you want to see some more Tabs battles, then make sure you subscribe and let me know by commenting and liking down below. Let me know what you want to see me do in totally accurate battle simulator. And finally, if you want to see my last Tabs American Civil War, there'll be a card in the top right corner of the screen. But most importantly, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you again again in my next tabs battle.